Hey guys, uh, it's time to get this engine fitted and get these motor mounts built. Uh, we just got back from the upholstery shop. We dropped off, uh, I'd say probably 95% of the interior. Um, they're starting to work on it. We kept one of the seats here, so that way we can make the, uh, the seat base uh, you know, in a proper location. Uh, but it's time now to drill this transom and uh, get this transom plate uh, test fitted to make sure that everything's okay. So that way we can cut our little Mickey Mouse ears that I call them up at the top. So that way your steering arm has clearance either side. Um, we'll go back to kind of back to the C Ray. Um, I bought this little thing right here, which is really, really nice because it allows you to be perfectly perpendicular to your surface that you're drilling. So, therefore, you can drill through nice and neat and keep it uh, perfectly, for lack of a better term, perpendicular to the transom. You don't, if you're cutting or you're drilling into a transom, you don't want to drill in like this. You want to drill in like this because that's where your bolt's going to go. If you drill in like this, your transom, will, the, the transom assembly will never fit. So they actually make a jig for it, but I found this at Home Depot and it tends to work okay. So you can see I've got my uh, jig here lined up and then what I did is I'm making sure that I have three feet touching at all times. It's impossible to get the fourth foot there, but you have three mounting locations to keep this jig perfectly level on the, uh, the transom itself. I just used two, um, uh, two clamps to hold it and we just slowly start drilling. Except when the clamp falls off. Make sure you go back and reference your service manual of the particular transom plate you're working on, whether it be a Mercruiser, Volvo, or OMC, to get the proper drill bit size that you need to use to drill it. Uh, this is a Mercruiser, and uh, you can either use a 9 16th or a 5 8 inch bit to drill your holes, and I'm just using a paddle bit in this situation. Uh, and I think I used a 5 8 on this one, which gives you a little bit of playroom, so that way if you're just a teensy bit off, you don't have to pound the, the uh, transom plate into place. What I'm doing is getting just to the end of it, where I can feel the tip poking through the other side, and then we'll drill back so that way we don't split out the fiberglass. And I think this bit is totally toast, man. It's not cutting like it used to. At this point, it's time to test fit this engine so that way we can measure for our front motor mounts. I've searched high and low for measurements for the front motor mounts on these Mercruiser engines to see if it's published somewhere, and I've asked many, many people, and they all say this is still the recommended way to be able to test fit your engine. The idea is, is you install your transom assembly, you drop your engine down in there, you bolt the rear mounts down, not super tight, but you get them fairly tight, and you use the, the engine hoist as your front adjustment. You take your alignment bar, slip it in through the gimbal ring, you get your engine kind of somewhat where it needs to be, where it slips in, and then take your front engine mount uh, measurements. Once that's done, you can take the engine back out, get your engine mounts built, and then move on from there. You can see here, we got this thing just kind of suspended in space here. You see, this is what we're measuring is where the, um, for this part right here. Um, we had done some pretty extensive measurements, but this is the best way to do it and make sure that you're 100% exactly where you need your pieces to be. So what I did is I put the bolts in, I'm trying to save the camera from the wind. And these are torqued to spec. And then we're using the engine hoist to give us our front adjustment, just like you would with these motor mounts down here. We ran the uh, alignment bar in and out, got it fairly happy where it needs to be. So we're gonna measure now, and also make sure that nothing's interfering with our trim pump and our battery tray. Now it's time to uh, make the top parts of the motor mounts. Uh, we needed about two inches uh, on top, so we took two three quarter inch pieces of plywood and one half inch piece of plywood, and we're gonna sandwich them together. And you notice I've got some chop strand out here. We're gonna do this kind of a, a way I've learned also in the past to glue things together instead of using peanut butter. We're gonna take our resin and chop strand, and we're gonna wet it really good, and then we're gonna clamp it together kind of like a sandwich. So if you just follow along here, You just want to get it nice and wet, it, wet out. And 
and then you turn the other one on top of it. You do the same thing here. Notice I left the, um, the edges sticking out on either side. We'll trim those off a little bit later when we sand it down. This provides a very, very good bond between it if you needed a flat bond. You can also use this on transoms if you wanted to. Instead of peanut butter, this works pretty good. Peanut butter works good for filling voids. This just works good at gluing stuff together. Now you take your clamps That's all you have to do. Now you let this stuff set up, you'll be good to go. Now we're ready to uh, get this uh, deck ready for us to put in these motor mounts. Um, this is the side piece, it goes in right here along the side and those pieces you saw a minute ago lay across this part. Now <clears throat> what we have to do to prep this is obviously we have to sand it. I've got overspray, I've got dust, I've got everything we've got and then plus this has sat for longer than about three days. If it sat longer than that, you need to make sure you sand it down really good and then wipe it good with acetone. Then we're going to take and put those two pieces together so that way it creates kind of a, an L, an upside down L. So it fits down in here and then we're going to mix up a huge batch of peanut butter and put both of these in at the exact same time. So now it's time to uh, bust out the DA. If you don't have one of these, you can use a grinder too. Uh, it's the grinder takes it off so fast and all you're trying to do is just scuff up the surface and prep it, and I'm using 40 grit to do this. Now that these things are completely uh, cured, we're ready to cut them. Uh, man, these things are really, really solid. Solid piece of wood now. We're just gonna take the, the circ saw and we're just gonna cut just a smidgen off all four sides uh, to round it, to basically square everything up and to get rid of the excess. It's simple as that. We're going to do the same thing with these and glue them together and clamp them really good with um, some screws to make sure that it, it holds in place. At this point you want a good mix of peanut butter thickened resin ready to go and do not be conservative on this. Slather it up, get it really good because what you're going to do is you're going to push it down. You're not going to clamp it too much. You want to have a little bit of a bond for those uneven surfaces with the uh, the glue mixture, you can use PL glue here if you want to, but I choose to use my peanut butter mixed up resin because it dries so much quicker and that way you can go ahead and lay glass right over it. And then we're going to use a couple of 2x4s to clamp it in place, provide our clamping pressure. And we measured 15 inches from our bulkhead back here up to the beginning of the mount
I'm sorry, 15 and a half inches. That's what it was. And we'll double check that when we're all done. But I'm going to go back through here and make sure we have our peanut butter in all the right places. Alright, I'm not going to really smooth anything out just yet because we're going to um, put the other one in. And then I'm going to use this 2x4 right here to wedge in between them and provide our clamping force. So we'll be back in a second. Now I'm going through and uh, rounding off all these uh, fillets so that way we have a good transition to the, uh, to the hull and the deck whenever we go to uh, put down our 1708. The uh, thing we, we're probably wondering what I'm going to do about them being so squared, we're going to actually take the grinder when this is all said and done and uh, round off all the edges so that way it's real easy to round uh, put our 1708 over it it's just easier to do it after we've glued them all in than to do it late you know beforehand trying to hang on to something while you're grinding as you can see, we got the uh, motor mounts in and they are curing. Uh, I've got that two by four across this right here, jammed in to hold it up against there and it squished it all out. And we uh, did a nice, easy, nice fillet in here. And uh, once it's completely dried or cured, we'll take all this off and we'll take the grinder and a belt sander and really round off the edges. That way we can uh, do our uh, you know, 1708 nice and neat. Um, we also finished making the seat bases. Um, we've got these done. We actually used uh, two by twelves because what we're going to do is uh, we were planning on using a little pivot or a seat pivot because we want to keep this boat the, the seat as low as possible. And I wanted about four inches up off the uh, the deck. And what this does is this puts us right at three. Uh, I say four and a half, actually four inches. This puts us at three and a quarter, and then we're going to put a piece of three quarter inch ply on top of this as a spacer. Um, I'm not going to get the, the seat swivels because there's about four different kinds and whoever buys this boat I want to be able to them to make that decision. So we're going to put a piece of three quarter inch that is the, the width of that little seat uh, swivel. So the pedestal itself will be this and this will be glassed in and gel coated and everything. But then in between the this and the seat will be a, a piece of three quarter inch treated pl uh, plywood that is a spacer that takes the place of that, that swivel. Um, I just don't know if somebody really is going to want to swivel for this boat, so I figured that's the easiest way, and if they want to do it, they can take it off, put the swivel, and call it a day. So um, I use 2x12s just because um, the, the lumber is a lot stronger than ply, and it, it takes a lot uh, more to rot. Um, and once we put this, just get this treated and drill into it, it's just it's going to be super strong. Um, so now we're just got to get these things glued together just like we did the other ones. We're going to put a uh, chop strain in between it, clamp them together, throw them in the sun, let them drop. Okay, well, um, I know this is probably right smack dab in the middle of a video, but uh, it's actually like two or three weeks later from we've done from the last time I videoed. Um, not much has gotten done. I'll show you what we did a little bit one evening, uh, but there's been so much other stuff going on in my life right now. Um, I, it's just you know work's been crazy, uh, and you know, that's my primary source of uh, income to support my family, so we have to do that first. Um, the boat can wait. It'll, it'll get done. We're going to get it done, but it has just been absolutely just hadn't any time. 
Um, we've had some little fiascos come up during the weekends. We've got baseball, we've got other types of stuff that we've had to go take care of. And that's just kind of cut into working time. So um, hopefully we're gonna get back on it here pretty hardcore in the next couple of weekends and really move along. Uh, we're so close. I mean, literally, we are that close to getting this thing done. Uh, but it's just a matter of finding time. That's the, the, the big problem we have right now. So let's go over here and show you what we got done a couple of weeks ago. The last time you saw, I do believe, um, we were cutting out um, these little uh, seat mounts um, and the, uh, the motor mounts and such. Now, <clears throat> we've done this before in the C-Ray, so I'm not going to bore you with all the, uh, the details on that. Uh, basically, we used 2x12s um, uh, on this uh, big lumber, and we made them taller because these seats are almost going to sit on the floor um, and then they make a uh, little swivel from Atwood that's locking so that way you can swivel your seats. I'm not going to put those in because I'm not sure the new owner would like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a piece of plywood in between it that is loose, it's not attached to it, that would represent the, the, uh, the actual uh, seat swivel and it'll be screwed through in the exact same uh, four uh, bolt configuration. And then that way if the new owner wants to take it off and, and add a swivel, he can. I don't think it's necessary, so I'm going to go with the stationary mounts. But these, I do believe, are almost four inches tall, maybe a little less than that, uh, giving an overall height of about four to four and a half inches uh, when it's all said and done. And that's what I felt most comfortable looking over the windshield uh, when I was sitting in the seats. And by the way, the seats are actually over getting redone right now. So we should have them back in a week. All brand new stuff on the inside of here. So that brings me to, we have got to DA this entire thing. We were really wanting to hope to uh, get this thing uh, uh, gel coated this weekend, but my gel coat has not come in yet, so it was my fault because I didn't order it in time. So what we're going to do is we're going to DA this whole thing and completely wash it out, get it completely cleaned and ready to go, and then we're going to cut our little Mickey Mouse ears up there and seal those. Um, oh, also, um, I ran a little bit piece of chop strand around the keyhole to make it nice and sealed. Um, that way that you know no water or anything if we get a crack in the gel of uh, the um, gel coat or the resin it's not going to let water in but um, just so you know that we've got when we put these down it's got two layers of 1708 tabbed in there and then one big layer of a uh, chop strand over the top of it for pretty uh, to make it pretty the uh, the back motor mounts I have almost I want to say seven layers on there it's very very thick um, it's incredibly strong you see my um, uh, trim pump mount and my battery mounts back here. They're all glassed in, ready to go. So all we need to do is really clean this out good, get it ready for gel coat. So as soon as it comes in, we're gonna put two layers of waxed down, non-waxed, and then we'll put one layer of wax down. If you look closely here, you'll see in my little kick plate, there's four or five little white things. Those are my drain holes. Now I gotta get my Dremel, hole, Dremel tool out. We're gonna open those up so that way if water ever does get behind the bulkhead up there, it has a place to drain. Uh, once that's done, get it all DA'd. If we have time tomorrow or the next day, we're gonna actually reassemble the dashboard. All my gauges are in. We're gonna get that put back together. The windshield is here from UDP Plastics. Uh, it looks great, but you can't put the windshield on until you have the, the gauges in. So no windshield yet, guys, but I'll show you here shortly. But it is here. All right, so you see I've done one of these, and this is just an inch and three quarters uh, inch bit, uh, pretty simple. You want to kind of go in at a roughly a 60 degree angle. Um, I'm not sure exactly on that angle. What you want to do is just make sure that you don't go through the outside skin and you give enough room for the clearance. I've done this a couple of times, so I kind of uh, did a, you know, know what to do. Um, and I also take my grinder when it's done and kind of round this off right here. So that way the water will run down if anything ever gets in here. And this is actually kind of going to be exposed. I'm sure water is going to come in through this area and drip down. So we just want to make sure we're nice and protected. So what I'm going to do is I just take this and uh, put it about like that. pull out and, and then start chipping away at the layers because your your uh, pull saw will not be long enough to be able to go all the way through in one fell swoop. I'm going to see what two layers of 1708 looks like. Right there. See there's the wood. There's two layers of 1708. Pretty good build if you ask me. And I, I actually retrofitted a longer bit on here, which actually allows me to drill a little bit deeper into it at an angle. Once you're 
you're happy with that. Let's take you to grind a little bit. And for all you guys who are saying I should be wearing a respirator, you're absolutely right. Uh, I have a fan blowing really hard behind me, so it's blowing a lot of it behind me, but I just totally forgot to put it on, so. Yes, for all you safety police, you should be wearing your respirator. Alright. Five little holes. That's all. Well, after uh, long hours of uh, sanding, uh, this deck is ready for a gel coat. It's still wet in here. We just washed it out uh, really good with water just to get all the dust and stuff, but you can see how it's all dull on top of there and dull down there. Knocked it all down. And then when I got all done, I kind of had uh, a thought that maybe I'm just going to throw some carpet in this. I don't know. Um, I really don't know right now. I'm, I'm so torn. Uh, this project has drug on for so long. I just don't know what I want to do anymore. So anyway, it's done. Um, this is probably all I'm going to be able to do this weekend besides the gauges, which we'll kick on it maybe tomorrow or something like that. But the sanding is done, and I tell you, it's nasty. I cannot stand this stuff again. I don't know if I'm going to do another boat for a while, guys. Now that you've got the deck all completely sanded and ready to go and prepped, uh, you want to mix your gel coat. Now, if you're doing just white, great. Mix your gel coat white and roll it in. However, in our case, I want to make it kind of a gray color to try to match the outside of this boat. So I called US Composites and I got two gallons of the uh, white gel coat unwaxed. Now that means it doesn't have any wax in it and they send the hardener along with it. So that means that uh, you can actually go over this with more layers. If you have wax in it, that's your final coat, which we'll go into more in depth later on. So uh, I got two layer, two gallons of this and I got one quart of the black and then I still have some tinting colors over there that we may need to add in there to kind of get the right color gray. Now I can only, I only get really one shot at this so we got to make sure we do it one, little bits at a time. I don't have to have an exact mix or color match like we did on the outside. We want it real close uh, because it's, it's actually not right up against it. So it's, it's a distance so your eye doesn't actually perceive that it may be one or two shades off. But we're going to get it close. So we've got all our, all our stuff here. We have a five gallon bucket. I'm gonna pour both gallons of this into the five gallon bucket. We're gonna mix it all together and then start adding little bits of our black to get our gray. Uh, we've got our mixer, our drill, and uh, we've got our, our uh, two quart cups here. And that's, I'll tell you why. We're gonna mix everything together, get our right color. And then we're gonna take little bits at a time to catalyze and then throw in there because the last coat that we're going to do, we're going to dump in a whole bunch of this surface modifying wax. Uh, and you want to make sure this is good and warm because it actually kind of turns into a solid if it gets cold. You pour that in there, you mix it all together, and that creates your wax covering. So that way we get one solid color all the way throughout. So this is a little more difficult than what we did on the uh, Sea Ray, but uh, it's not too bad. So here we go. Tint really darkened up. We've actually gone through almost a whole quart of black uh, and put some gray tint in it that I had. Now we're adding black tint. <clears throat> it takes a lot to change the color of white gel coat. Uh, you could use neutral gel coat to do this, but it's getting close. Um, let's see where we're sitting right now. I think it still needs to be a little darker. Yeah, a lot darker. Here's all our different color swatches and I think we're pretty close to where we want to be. Uh, we started out here and you see that this color is kind of a bluish, uh, real cool color. And I started adding a little bit of yellow right here. And then as we went further in, I discovered that it's actually brown that needs to be in it. If you look at this color compared to that over there, it's really kind of almost a brown color. And that's what I put in it. And uh, I think we're going to go with this color right here. I'm real happy with it. It's, if you stand back, why don't you pan over here, get the, get the railing in here in, in it. 
Yeah, so you can see that this is a really, really close color. And on a galloping horse, you'd never know the difference. So that is exactly what we're going with. Hands cramping. So, how much have you used so far, Jay? Not even a half gallon. Um, it's pretty amazing. Well, that took about two and a half to three hours, but it is done. Um, I'm really happy with how this came out. We did two coats, one coat with wa without wax and one coat with, and we went ahead and just kind of did up underneath there with our leftover. Took us about a, ga took us, what, a gallon and a half? Yeah, about a gallon and a half total to do all this. You notice we have not done up underneath the gunnels there. We're actually having carpet that's gonna go all the way down to that spot, and then it's gonna start and come over with gel coat. And 90% uh, of this will never be seen. That's what's kind of sad of it. Well, you'll see it when you open the engine cover. But the majority of this is covered. You get a seat that goes here and two big seats that go right there. A console that comes out right there. So really you don't have a lot of floor space you're gonna see. Um, the gray is not quite 100% the same, but it's close. Uh, it has a little more blue tint to it, so it's not 100 you know, you close the garage door and it looks the same. You open it up, put it in the sunlight, it looks different. Depends on where you stand in the garage is what, if it matches or not. So that's it. Two coats on this one, guys. I'll tell you, that, um, that uh, U.S. Composites gel coat really did a great job. Um, now we just let it kick off. I'm going to let it sit for a couple, three days, and we start reassembly. I've got all the gauges to go in here. They're sitting up right up there, Faria box. Uh, I've, as we saw in the previous video, I've got that all polished. For the people that follow me on Facebook, uh, you'll remember that I said that I got a new engine. Well, here's the new engine, and it is almost ready to go. Um, it is a late 90s block, uh, pre-Vortex, so it's not quite the Vortex block, but uh, this thing is in, in, is in very, very good shape. I wanted something a little bit newer that has the center bolt heads. Uh, this is a 350 mag. Uh, this one has the roller lifters, roller cam, uh, and it also has a four bolt main, which is a really big thing. Uh, we got it all run in. Um, I ordered a rebuilt quarter jet. It came in here, and to be brutally honest, it was a piece of junk. Um, so what I did is I ended up sending it back. Uh, they're redoing one and sending it back and giving them one more chance before I really start screaming about it. Um, whenever you hit the accelerator pump, when you do that, only you still have two jets that come out in each one of the uh, Venturis. Well, only one of them was coming out really good. The other one was just kind of barely spitting. And supposedly this thing was fully renewed. So anyway, um, it was running okay. It's just whenever you hit the accelerator pump, it wanted to stumble. It didn't want to quite get up and go like it should. So I sent it back and it'll be coming back in. But it's been run and it's 100%. We put new spark plugs in it, new oil. Uh, everything, it's ready to go. Uh, it's a very low hour motor. Um, I saw the guy when he was putting it all back together. I bought it locally. So uh, I'm pretty, pretty satisfied that it's a good, good motor. Uh, and also a very late model so it's uh you know it's not 2000 or above which would be nice but it's just not in the budget for this build but it should be a great little motor to push this thing down the lake pretty darn quick that's where we are right now uh we've got the gel coat done we've got the engine ready we've got all the stuff ready to go we just gotta start putting it all back together uh it is uh, early april um it's actually been kind of cold in the beginning of this april it's been kind of nasty and windy and rainy which is good because we need the rain uh, but you know, hey, it's it's going to get done sooner or later. I've had a lot of things going on at work, and uh, just haven't had a whole lot of time to spend on this. But now all the nasty work is 100% done. Uh, the the interior is off getting fixed. We should see that late this week, hopefully. I'm going to go check on it on Monday, uh, and then uh, we just got to start putting stuff back together. I think I've got everything to do it. We just got to find the time to put it back together. 
we're going to get this done, get it back on the trailer, and get it lake tested as soon as possible. And then we're probably going to put a coat of paint on the trailer. I'm kind of putting the trailer on the back burner right now just because uh, we just have not had time and I want to get this thing in the water and get it to somebody who wants to use it for the summer. So anyway, that's where we are, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, and uh, once again, sorry it took so long to get the video to you.